Hey there guys, this is Obsidian Chill. Got another video for today. Now in the past, I've done a controller guide video where I did all the controller power sets on one video uh, and showed uh, the spec, the loadout, and rotation for them, just as like a generic foundation video. Uh, and I wanted to do that for tanks. I haven't really done uh, tank guides on this channel in quite some time, not since before the revamp. Uh, and I still tank main on the EU server. So we'll kind of go through this here. Now... Basically, this isn't going to be as in-depth as my controller um, guide series is because uh, I'm doing this on the test server. But uh, think of it as like a foundation stepping stone. Uh, so basically, it gives you a, like a, a starting point for your tanking uh, rotation and guides. Uh, something that all these rotations are going to be, you know, serve you just as well. Uh, I've been tanking on and off in this game since beta. Uh, so we'll kind of get into the... Um, the nit and gritty first, basically, um, mods, rotation, stuff like that, Trink trinkets, artifacts. Um, I'll also, I'm going to include in the links below in the comment section. You'll see uh, links to each tank guide uh, separated, so that if you don't, if you're not interested in ice tanking, you can skip straight to atomic or earth or fire or whatever tanking you may be. Weapon choices, obviously it boils down to your preference. Um, my preference is you want a weapon that has a fast lunge. So one-handed, uh, shield, bow, not so much, but uh, it still is a fast block breaker. Martial arts, same thing, not the, the fastest lunge, but a uh, fast block breaker and a good lunge. So basically you, you can use whatever weapon you want, but I tend to keep to these four choices. Um, fast lunges are very important, the same with block breakers, which one-handed and shield do plenty well. Uh, in terms of weapon mods, you're always going to have absorption adapter. Head mods are going to vary uh, from tank to tank. There's really, there's no, obviously you're not going to have the crit head mods because there's no weapon buffs being used as a tank. There's no supercharges of tanks for their any good except for atomics, mass density. Fire's internal flame is okay, but it's way worse from before revamp, so, you know, just ditch it. Uh, if you're using an OP head, just run it with your DPS white mod because there's really no tank white mods out there that are any good. Uh, neck, fortified assault or fortified blocking. Uh, it's going to be situational. I'll tell you uh, in the tank set which to use and when. Uh, back mods, breakout protection, or you can use... Um, uh, there's a lot of tanks that have like accelerated winter ward, accelerated such and such. So check to make sure what uh, your power set is to see if it has an accelerated shield mod and run that in your back. The chest mod, you could run quick healing. Uh, ideally, you want to search for a mod called Hardy. It's a 5% health buff uh, it's from the time, early time capsules. Uh, check for that on the broker. That's ideally what you want to have as a tank. Leg mods, the restorative mods don't really restore that much health at all, so you can skip it if you want. If not, then find it like restorative frost lamb, stuff like that. Um... In terms of your hands, regenerative shielding really doesn't make that much of a difference. Uh, you'll see it kind of throughout the guide here. Uh, it really only heals like 600, 700 damage. And when your health is sitting at like, you know, 55 or 51,000, whatever, uh, it's really not going to make that much of a difference. It's not going to save you. Uh, so you can run max damage if you want. Uh, feet mod, deadly blocking, or explosive block is all situation depending on the fights. But uh, that's about it. In terms of mods, uh, I always keep all my tank mods all the same, dominance and health. Uh, there's some power sets where but it will benefit from more dom or more health. Like, say, fire, dominance doesn't really matter as much, so you want to have more health. Uh, and, say, for, like, atomic, dominance matters a lot, so you want more dom. So you could, you could play around with the mods and do, like, full dom, stuff like that. But if you ever change power sets in the future then that may not be as beneficial. So dominance and health is always safe to be balanced in all your mods. And then in your other ones, like your red and yellow sockets, just do a dom power, a dom prec, or a dom might. Uh, because every single tank power set's going to have a shield, which will benefit strictly from dominance and a little bit of resto. Uh, so specking dominance in the other mods is, is safe as well. In terms of your trinkets, uh, you're always going to have the health trinket whatever it is at that current tier. Uh, you should always have chronomatic emitters uh, for just for add stuns because you never know if the troll is going to do it. You're always going to run out your breakout trinket and then you don't always need your breakout trinket, but you should. You should always have a breakout trinket. In terms of your other one, you could run sidekick, orbital, spy drop, doesn't really matter. But uh, 
These three trinkets are, or you could run the Tom bot that gives you 5% health on spawn, the servo bots, those ones, um, stuff like that. In terms of artifacts, um, was the distral refractor is really the only tank artifact there are there is sorry uh, hitting an enemy with a pull grants you and up to seven members of your uh, raid health equal to 15.5 percent of your dominance so really that's the only good artifact you could run the the, the legionnaire sparring ai uh, that's for only if you to counter your you know precision of weapon dps go by by 14 percent and you get immunity for four seconds uh that immunity is kind of suspect uh, I've been tanking Zoo because um, Zoo is very stun heavy with the the commando bats always stunning you, uh, and I've gotten counters on them and I've still been stunned like you know a second later. So I would I would take that counter immunity with a grain of salt. You can run this if you wanted to. You could run the Soul Cloak if you're like Atomic or whatever. Um, but really, the only artifact you need as a tank is the Refractor. Uh, the second one is kind of up to you because there's really no other good uh, second options. We'll jump into uh, ice. In terms of how I spec ice, pretty much every single tank except atomic is going to be hybrid uh, because you get the 5% dom and resto. Uh, most tanks don't benefit at all from the critical healing chances except like fire. Uh, like the rage uh, mechanic doesn't uh, apply to this. The atomic aura doesn't apply to this. Except proton remedy does. But uh, so really, you just want to take ten just to get down to the next row. And then as ice, ice uh, obviously ice is shield heavy, so I spec full dominance. Now what changes with here? It's tough because I'm on the test server and only have two hundred seventy-four skill points, so I can't really uh, show you a full spec. But uh, it. If I, like on live server, I have over 400 skill points. So if I had those 400 skill points, I would do a full dom. Then I would do like 100 in resto and then the rest in health. Um, that's specifically for ice because it's so shield heavy. I have a better benefit from specking more resto than I do health. Uh, because I'm always going to have a shield popped. Uh, it's not like you need to go like max resto. But you just need to do like do like a 60-40 split. That's what I always recommend. 60% into resto, 40% into health. In terms of everything else, iconic powers, ice, you need to take Amazon Deflection. Uh, you can take Sonic Cry. I'll tell you why in a sec. Hard Light Shield is always a must. Uh, in terms of super speed, the, the Restraint Recovery, you don't really need that power return. Just take the, the, the first row um, with whatever movement mode you are, fight or whatever. You, you don't need the, the power recovery. It's not going to be that much power. And you save some skill points. In terms of weapons, since I run Fortified Assault, I'm attacking. I'm using weapon combos. So I'd max out whatever weapon tree you're using. You can go full Weapon Mastery if you want. That's a lot of skill points. That's like 20, 22 skill points that go into Weapon Mastery. Um, I feel that's a waste. And unless you really want to battle tank or do damage, uh, just having the one weapon tree and I can do Flip Slash anytime I want is just fine. But in terms of the Ice Loadout... Uh, this is going to be for Ad. Inescapable Storm is going to be your pull. Sonic Cry. So basically, you could use Sonic Cry or Frost Slam. Uh, those are the two your basically crowd control moves. Frost Slam just knocks them down. Sonic Cry is a stun. I prefer stuns personally. That's why I use Sonic Cry. Uh, Reflection, Shadow Restraints is your breakout. Winter Ward is your strongest shield. And Amazon Deflection is the strongest shield in the entire game. Uh, so that's what I run for that. The only other variant I use for ice is on bosses. And basically, uh, oh, the thing I should mention as well, Frost Snipe is the, the hard taunt. The only thing with Frost Knight is not a pull, so it's not going to proc this um, your Refractor artifact. So that's not ideal because you're going to lose all that health and your group's going to use, use that, lose that health, sorry. Uh, so then what you want to do is just spec into Mesmerizing Lasso. They fixed Lasso, so it actually only taunts one target now instead of it uses taunt multiple ones if they were close. Uh, and it's a pull, so it'll proc the artifact. So basically for boss fights, um, Inescapable Storm or Lasso, depending on what you want to do. And then it's just Reflection, Shatter Strength, Hard Light Shield, Winter Ward, and Amazon Deflection. So boss fights, basically it's five shields in one pull. Because you, you don't need any kind of ad management. And even if there's error ads on the boss, you're fine with your chronomatic emitters stunning them.
in terms of the rotation actually in practice, uh, we got the Paradox Warrior here. We'll get those ads summoned. Now, so I can keep the ads summoned there. And as I said before, Winter Ward is your strongest shield. Uh, we might as well pull these ads over here. So I can keep them all stunned with there. With Sonic Cry, that's my preference. Before revamp, uh, your Reflect was your strongest shield. Now Reflect lost that extra bonus. Uh, now it's going to be Winter Ward. Uh, Shadow Restraints is your weakest shield per se. Hard Light Shield is next after that. Then it's Reflect. Then it's Winter Ward. So I'm going to get bald here. Boom. Amazon Deflection tanked it. Zero damage. Your shields will stack as well, so if you really need to, you could, uh, you know, just stack Reflect with Winter Ward or Shadow Restraints, etc. Get those guys stunned. Shield again. You know, and you guys get the picture. Okay, now we're on to fire tanking. Uh, fire tanking changed significantly uh, since revamp. Uh, and largely, <laughs> largely for the worse. Uh, like, fire tanking used to be, like, the tank. Like, the definition of tanking. Uh, now, we're kind of left with <laughs> what the devs did to it. Uh, so, the actual fire tanking effect, you get 50% health buff, that's a innate buff, 50% uh, extra he incoming healing while not blocking, uh, and you get fire soul, fire soul is basically you gain 30% defense while not blocking as you directly damage burning enemies, and increases up to 50%. Uh, uh, what that means is basically that the devs are trying to get uh, players to be more active tanking, uh, but it really doesn't play out that much. If you... If you go into uh, any kind of raid, uh, any kind of like end game raid, like SSE, TTB, uh, like Zooey, stuff like that, if you try to walk around as a fire tank without blocking, uh, as you would like an ice tank, you're going to get wrecked. Uh, fire Soul does not. Basically, think of fire tanking as like a weak ice tank or an ice tank with weak shields um, if you're not blocking. So, so uh, unfortunately, fire still has to block. Uh, and kind of turtle a bit. There's moments where you can not have to worry about it, uh, but largely you're going to be blocking most of the time to be able to survive. Uh, you also may ask why I'm in Area 51, is because Area 51 is home to the Reapers that will actually kill you, so it's uh, quite helpful to actually uh, show tanking. So going to the specs, um, unfortunately I don't have the skill points on test server, which is annoying to show you what I would spec as fire. Um, obviously it's still going to be hybrid. You want to take the critical healing chances now because of all your self heals. Uh, these are going to be beneficial. Uh, if you have low skill points, you can take you know 20 and 20 of each instead of 20 and 40. Um, then I want to max out health. If I had enough skill points, I would put 205 into health. And then the rest in the DOM. You don't need to worry about Resto. You think you need to worry about Resto because you're self-healing. But it's not going to matter that as much as you would with DOM. Because you still want DOM. Because you're still going to be running shields. Uh, in terms of a loadout. There's a couple variations. Uh, you're, you're always going to have Engulf. That's your range pull now. Think of it like in Scapel Storm and it burns enemies. Backdraft is, is your best burst heal. As well as it's um, a pull and a crowd juggle. So basically... You pull them from far with engulf, then pull them all to close together with backdraft, and then hit your chronomatic emitter. Burn termination uh, basically heals up to 10 times. Stoke flames, immolation, which is your shield, and then basically Amazon deflection, which is for that, you know, those oh shit moments, or basically in between cooldowns. So we'll kind of show, I'll jump into the, uh, the tyrant here and show you the strength of the actual heals. But if I started here, 
and we'll pop uh, Grim Termination. So you can kind of get an idea of the heals you're going to get with that. Ten times. Now that healing is stopped. Now we're going to go to the Stoke Flames. And that stopped. Cover. Uh, so basically, if I take a soda, so we're back up to full. Once the immolation is gone, uh, we're going to pop both healing times at once. Which then makes it you know, a bit more tanky. If, if you got both running at once, even though it's a bit power heavy, uh, you certainly have, have a better option there. And then basically hit immolation to recover until both those are cool down. And at the same time, you, you can have engulfs, so and now they're all burning. Uh, so now I can get backdraft. I'm gonna get the burst heal from there. And same thing, they've got very short cooldowns, so you can keep hitting backdraft, get your burst heal up. And then basically, I've got both healing you know, times active again. And I can basically sit here and not have to worry about blocking until it runs out. And then basically, I pop the mission back up again. So we'll kind of, as an example, we'll kind of let ourselves get down a little here. Just to show you the action here on these guys. Uh, so now we'll pop in Deflection. Basically, you know, I can just be in Amazon Deflection and sit back. See, you saw right there, it is possible to get knocked out of Amazon Deflection. Uh, that is a possibility. Uh, so it's not like the be-all, end-all of powers. Uh, but it, it's largely going to save you in those moments. Uh, the other thing you see me not running here is Burnout. You don't necessarily need a Breakout at all for Fire. Uh, that's not going to be as necessary. Uh, you've got your Breakout Trinket if you really needed it. Burnout is a weaker Burst Heal, so I've, I'd still want Backdraft that I can keep spamming for my Burst Heal. Uh, that is going to be much better than Burnout. It's basically not necessary. So the, the the thing to take away from this is, is fire tanking, you know, doesn't suck as much as you would think. It it still it still needs some help. Uh, the other thing too is that um, it, it is very very power heavy uh, compared to the other tanks. So basically that's all it is. It's you got immolation or hard light shielding. You don't have to run Amazon deflection. You could run. Um, Hard light shield instead, so you got those two shields, and then basically you have burn termination and stoke flames active at the same time, always. So you get the double healing, and then basically you're waiting for that healing, those cooldowns to run out. Now we're popping immolation to survive. In that meantime, we can also use Amazon deflection and sit in that until our cooldowns are back, and then boom, we've got stoke flames and burn termination back up again. And then all the meantime, I could be hitting backdraft to get my burst. But that's really it for fire. On to Earth. Uh, Earth tanking changed with the revamp before Aftershocks was the way to go. Now Aftershocks uh, lags behind significantly. For, you know, lower-end content or old raids, Aftershocks still does just fine, uh, as well as the Aftershocks is for your battle tanking, for jackhammering. But uh, in terms of endgame content, you're still going to want to go to a brick-heavy rotation. Um, in terms of what happened to Earth, Earth gets the... Uh, let's go back up to Earth here. Earth, get, you get defense up to 65% of your dominance uh, while not blocking. That's just standard. That's a, You don't have to hit a power for that. Uh, and then Aftershocks was about a 55% buff, but uh, it doesn't, uh, doesn't stack with uh, Brick Tanking. So essentially, in terms of uh, how you spec, it specs about the same. Uh, you still go, uh, you don't have to worry about your critical healing, obviously. I still spec um, max your dom because I'm using Gemstone Shield and Hard Light Shield on this rotation, so I'm going to want a Dom-heavy build. And then after your Dominance, just put everything to health. Uh, in terms of all the other mods and stuff, doesn't change. 
I'm still using Fortified Assault for this, uh, even though it's not so much a turtle build, but you're just as good normal blocking without the 10% from Fortified Blocking, so you don't have to worry about it. In terms of a loadout, uh, I have a couple of loadouts I use for Earth. Uh, this one is more like a boss uh, or a long fight build. I've got Earth and Grip, which is your pull. Fortify Golem, this is going to shield and power brick. Gemstone shield and, and hard light shield are your shields. Totem is going to heal brick, and then obviously brick itself. So because Totem's um, cooldown is 30 seconds, you can't be using this for adds or, or uh, in a quick fight. It's going to be useless. Uh, this is more for the boss fights, keeping brick alive. Um as long as possible without having to worry about the heals because you'll notice that if brick dies your your health gets pretty chunky so that's why i have hard light gemstone shield and hard light shield just in case um you know, brick drops and i need that uh in terms of a fight where i'm the reason why i'm not running uh where is it uh, soothing sands which is your group breakout most fights in this game now don't require a breakout there are some that do so um it's not, it's not necessarily that I'm saying don't run with a breakout anymore. I'm just saying it, it's not as beneficial as it once was. Say uh, there are some certainly some fights that still do, like um, Penny, um, the last Maguire and SSE, stuff like that for the balls. You want you want group breakouts for those. And then if you needed a breakout for a fight, just sub in Totem. Just just take out Totem and put uh, Soothing the Sands in. But uh, I would run totem uh, unless you needed a group breakout the breakout that's fine if you don't keep up with totem uh, so we'll just drop break here start this summon totem and I'm not gonna even worry about popping shields so you see brick in the left hand corner you can see the blue bar is gone so he's got no power so you use fortified golem there just to bring his power back up and he gets a little bit of healing over time and then you're basically, you, you don't have to watch that bar, but just kind of pay attention to it. So if it starts to drop and you don't see any blue anymore, you know, just hit Fortified Golem. Uh, and if not, you're just kind of hitting it. Personally, I would hit it just before Totem is off cooldown, so he's got a bit of a shield. And then you're just summoning Totem um, to get Burke back up. And obviously while I'm here, I could be blocking while I'm doing this. I could just as easily be hitting your shields. Essentially, my health is not even moving. Well, it has taken a big chunk out, but it's because they're just standing around not getting any more shields. Totems also knocks down enemies, so if there's a boss fight that has like some adds up at the same time, um, be fine from that aspect as well. But, you know, essentially, you know, just sitting here. Once again, breaks out of power. Go. Some totem again. In terms of an ad build, like, say, after that boss fight, uh, you're, you're going through tunnels and killing a bunch of ads. I changed my loadout to here. I'm still using Earth and Group because that's your range pull. Then I'm pulling them closer together with Epicenter, and then I'm jackhammering them, uh, basically just for the juggle. Jackhammer is a very good uh, crowd control move. It just basically keeps them perma juggled. Uh, it does use a lot of power, so you don't necessarily have to keep spamming it, uh, but it's still effective with Brick, uh, even though you don't get the the stacking uh, defense buff from the Stone Skin and the Pet Transfer. And then I've got Gemstone Shield and Hard Light Shield, just so I can kind of clip that together with Epicenter if I need to. Um, this isn't going to be the best test, because obviously these things are going to die quite pretty quickly, but uh, it gives you an idea. So basically, uh, starting off with a pull, pulling these in, Epicenter in, and now I'm going to Jackhammer and kind of keep them juggled. Pull them in, epicenter, and just clip epicenter with gemstone shield, and kind of keep going in.
Flipping your pole through shield if you need to. Epicenter, back in the jackhammer. Same thing, you can always like pull, flip epicenter, and then do your chrono, and then into jackhammer while they're stunned. Same difference. Okay, on to rage. Rage tanks changed uh, slightly. Now and they get uh, an innate buff, and your tank stance is 50% defense. Uh, with the fortified assaults, you're going to have the 10% extra, and then you get a 20% flat buff in your health. Uh, the other major change is that severe punishment only heals 75% of the incoming damage as opposed to the 100%, uh, and it lasts for 8 seconds where the cooldown is 12. So basically there's the 4 second gap where you're not going to be uh, in the rage mechanic. Uh, the other major change is if we go into here to actually show it. Uh, scar tissue. So as your combo meter increases, gain health equal to a percentage of your dominance up to a maximum of 100% of your dom. Uh, what that means is when your hit counter gets above 50, that is basically, well, basically as your hit counter goes up to 50, you're going to be gaining uh, extra health. Uh, it caps at 50. Once you're beyond 50, it's going to stay uh, the same. And I'll show you that in a moment. Uh, actually, you might as well show you it now. So basically, uh, as you can see, my base health is 72,259. So if I started doing my counter meter, let's quickly get this to 50. Let's say if I showed it now, you know, 77,386. I dropped. And then if I did it at like 30, you're going to see it, you know, 81, 232. So it's slowly going up. And then once I'm going to be at 50, I'm at 85, 708. So even if I keep going into the 60s and 70s, I'm still going to be at that uh, same number. That's still that 85, 078. So what that means for your spec, you think you'd want to spec a lot of DOMs, so you max out your scar tissue. That health isn't as much. Uh, as you would think, it's still better for rage tanks to mod full health, or not mod full health, but spec full health, and then put the rest into DOM. Obviously, because I'm 274 skill points on test server, uh, 35 into dominance is not much at all. Ideally, you want to be sitting at 100, and so that would put you at um, you know 340 skill points, which is you know, above average, but still the same thing. You'd, you'd want uh, max your health, and then put the rest into DOM. Don't worry about resto. In terms of a loadout... Rage tanks stay pretty similar for boss fights and for adds. There's a couple variations. Um, you're always going to want Rage Bringer, which is your pole and your taunt. Severe Punishment is your, your obviously your Rage Crash mechanic. Uh, Inviscerating Chain is the best Rage Cancel. There's other ones like Outrage, stuff like that. Uh, but E-Chain uh, is what everyone uses, and it's the most fluid uh, to be able to cancel your Rage Crash mechanic. Ayer is your breakout, as well as a small self-heal. Redirected Rage is your shield. Um, where it kind of differs is, me personally, I run Remorseless Recovery. So basically, I always clip Sphere Punishment with Remorseless Recovery. Remorseless Recovery is going to give you healing up to six times, you know, based on your stats. Um, so that supplements some of the healing that you're going to get from uh, the 75% damage incoming. Uh, as well as the Rage Crash, or basically this buff drops after 8 seconds. So by clipping it with Remorseless Recovery, it lasts the full 12 seconds uh, because they have the exact same cooldown. As well as this is the Reducer. Uh, so that, say, if you did Rage Crash, your damage, the damage you take by Rage Crash is reduced. So other people may run without Mercy. Um, that's another pull. Think of it like Epicenter with Earth. Uh, basically it's like your AOE pill. I can kind of show you, but it's, it's, uh, I'm sorry. but it's mainly without mercy is mainly just ad management. So if you're doing a raid, say like SSE ads or stuff like that, where there's a lot of ads, um, without mercy is, is basically, you're going to get a little bit of heal, but rage bringer, essentially you can keep spamming that. And it's, it's going to do the same thing. You stun them with a chrono. Uh, you don't necessarily need Without Mercy. It is very handy if you're being surrounded by ads just for a little bit of crowd control. Pull them in, then hit your chronomatic emitter. 
So it's, it boils down to a preference. I prefer remorseless recovery, but there's situations where without mercy will be just as handy. Uh, the only other variation... The only other variation uh, will be on boss fights. Basically, uh, redirect your rage is going to be your move, your shield to hit between when severe punishment is the eight second drop and rage cooldown. So basically, you have a four second window where you need to prevent incoming damage. Uh, redirect your rage. If you're doing like boss fights or, or like elite content, you may want to run hard light shield as well uh, instead of that. So you basically have two shields to survive. Not only, uh, like, say, a big incoming damage is taken, you can clip severe punishment with redirect rage. They'll stack so that you have a much more powerful um, combination there. And then you still have hard light shield uh, for the cooldown, or you have hard light shield and redirected rage for your cooldown. So basically, that's the, the other variation. But um, most of the time, you're going to be fine running uh, this variant here. So you've got your reducer, you've got your canceller, your breakout, the shield pull and your mechanic that's uh, essentially what it boils down to so with rage uh there in terms of the rage crash mechanic basically you have two options you have the in-game sound you can listen to for the heartbeat we'll do it here and then basically as the sound goes dead that's when you would rage crash uh, and I don't really listen to the game sound at all. I like to go by the actual cooldown. So if we go back to hitting a uh, severe punishment again, uh, once you get to about 6 o'clock, so halfway down the cooldown, this is where you need to make sure that you have broken out or you need to hit I or make sure you're not basically controlled by a boss or something. And then basically, once again, what you want to do is crash just after it passes 7 o'clock, and that's when you need to chain. So basically right now, that's when you need to hit it because at 75% you've, you've crashed. So basically to kind of show an example here, if I go into these guys, so the first thing I'll do is crash. Boom, you just saw myself to chunk health. So we'll go back right here. My shield expires. Okay back to severe and we're going to make sure that we're broken out and everything just for when to cancel it which is right about now and we're good again make sure we're broken out and there we go and then basically since you have the four seconds where you don't have you know, severe punishment up, that's where you have redirected rage for. Just basically to survive for that four seconds until you can cool down back up again. And then that's all you need to do. Okay, on to Atomic. Now, Atomic pretty much is the exact same as it was before revamp, except that the how the abilities work change. But... In terms of like your loadout and rotation, they're the exact same, uh, except that you probably run mass. You, you didn't run mass density before because it wasn't as good. Now, because the shields are so much stronger to revamp, you run mass density. Um, but that's about it. But in, in terms of what changed with Atomic, uh, we'll get into that here. So right off the bat, the changes to the aura, you still gain. Uh, you get twenty five percent damage absorption from incoming damage while you're not blocking and you heal 2% of your max health uh, per attack. And then the actual tank bonus is you get 90% defense while not blocking just by standing around. So what that means is that uh, in terms of a spec, you're still specking max dom. Instead, you're taking a super powered spec because you're not gonna be using any weapon attacks. Well, you are for countering because the, the atomic combos don't counter anymore. So you're gonna need to counter yourself. Um, so you still run super powered even though you're going to lose the 5% in dominance, it's still super powered is the way to go. You're taking 10 crit chance and crit healing magnitude just to get down there, max your dom, and then max your health. And in terms of the neck, you're still running Fortified Assault. Fortified Assault is one of the reasons why it was so great for atomic tanks in general. 
And in terms of the loadout, uh, nothing really changes. Now, there is a battle tanking loadout for, um, just as battle tanking for Earth has, there's a battle tanking for Atomic. It just changes the combos around. I'm not going to show that in this video because I'm more focused on peer tanking. I don't really mess around with battle. Like, even myself, I don't battle tank. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a peer tank when I tank. So we're running Atomic Organization. That's the, the, the teleport pole, atom splitter, and thermochemical explosion are our combos. Density would be the shield. Proton remedy is going to be basically like your heal over time and your aura shortcut. Neutrino Blast is your group breakout and the aura shortcut. The only change I make is if I don't necessarily need a group breakout uh, and then the shield. Mass Density is a very, very great shield. It's the only good tank shield or tank supercharge in the game. Uh, so if you're in a fight where you need a shield, like say you're doing the Aquaman tentacles uh, or stuff where you really don't need a breakout in general, run Mass Density for a group to be helpful. Uh, that's about the only change that I make in terms of that loadout. But um, most of the time, unless I need it, I'm running Neutrino Blast just for the, the group breakout. Uh, what I mean by an aura shortcut is um, if you're new to Atomic, you need to keep your combo chain. Like, so if I go to uh, Adam Splitter here, um, basically each combo you do adds a new a stack. Once you have three stacks, you gain uh, six charges, and then your aura will activate. And then basically you need to keep comboing to keep your aura activated the whole time. If you use Proton Remedy or Neutrino Blast, if you get one stack, uh, you can basically shortcut so what I mean by that is to so say if I was just going to keep doing these combos over and over again, it's going to take me much longer to actually get uh, to the aura. There we go. Now I'm at the aura. So that took obviously much longer amount of time. Where if you don't have the ore active, uh, basically you're very, very squishy. Uh, obviously you, without the ore, you basically only have density to save you when you turn to stone. Uh, that's pretty much the only move that can save you if your ore drops. Uh, and then obviously if, once you're in mass, your density, I keep saying mass density, that's the, the supercharge. But once you're in des density, you want to get back into your ore right away. So basically if I did one stack here, bam, clip it, I'm in my ore. So I could have done that technically a bit faster uh, or, let this or drop again. So the way you keep your aura up is keep comboing. So basically one and I can clip it and my aura. But before I basically even do the second combo, I can clip it with either Proton Remedy or, or Neutrino Blast to get into my aura immediately. Um, if In case your aura drops, that, that's basically a shortcut rather than keep going. So we'll jump into the fight here. Start with the aura off. Density, so that's up. And then it's the shortcut. It's active. Screw up the commas a couple times. I haven't been atomic in a very long time. Proton remedy, heal over time, same thing. Popping your shield, but obviously you get used to it. I'm just not used to. Uh, I haven't been atomic in quite some time, but it's just tap me at least. I mean, might be off. Same thing. Neutrino blast, you break out. So really, the, the the biggest concern with Atomic is just running out of power. That's all it is. Because if you don't have the power to keep the combo chain up, then you're... that's that's essentially it for Atomic.